So if the if the if the greatest athletes and and business people people in the world surround themselves with people smarter than they are in their respective fields and industries, why would I not want to do that? Why would I want not want to pursue coaching or counseling to become to optimize my own performance? To, don't tell me that your marriage is operating at its peak performance. That that you and or your spouse are the hap like could not be happier. Like you're or maybe you you you've you you couldn't be better parents. You're the greatest parent. Like come on, you know what I'm saying? Like we can all get better in in in, in all these different areas. So why would you not want to do that? Welcome to the EQ for Entrepreneurs podcast. Like most business owners, you already know you need good business and marketing strategies to scale and be profitable. But at some point, you've hit the dreaded wall where you feel stuck and frustrated. EQ for Entrepreneurs is for business owners and leaders who are honest enough to admit that they just might be the ones holding their business back and are brave enough to change that. We're Noble and Kathy, and every week we're having candid conversations about all things emotional intelligence and how growing that has allowed us to get out of our own way and is radically transforming both our businesses and our personal lives. This is the secret sauce strategy for modern entrepreneurs who are tired of hustling without seeing results and want to grow a business and a life that they love. What is going on, entrepreneurs, leaders, and influencers? Welcome to episode 102. What? And happy new year, by the way. Hopefully, this year is going to be an amazing, amazing year. And it absolutely can be if you're intentional. If you're intentional about growing yourself, if you're intentional about growing your emotional health, your emotional intelligence, then things will have a tendency to impact you less and you will be more emotionally stable and more emotionally predictable. And that's been one of the huge blessings that I have received as a result of growing my emotional health and emotional intelligence. Some of you all may be watching this on our YouTube channel, EQ for Entrepreneurs. Some of you all may be listening to us on our podcast and I will be referring a lot to my notes. I've got kind of a, a script laid out here. So bear with me if you're watching on YouTube, if you see me looking down a lot. And I'm going to be referencing quite a bit on my notes. And I just want to, again, continue to thank you all for your support and for following us along in your own, hopefully, your own emotional growth journey. I have found that for me personally, it's been very, very beneficial, impactful to grow alongside of somebody else, right? To to be able to watch somebody else's emotional growth journey and even to do it maybe even in, in community. So thank you all so much for your continued support. And again, just want to continue to encourage you in your own emotional growth journey. It is so worth it. And I've got some super fun things to share with you in today's episode. We're going to be talking about results, results of emotional growth. And I've got some personal ones I want to share and even some other ones that I got just literally from a, from a couple phone calls today. So really excited to share with you all today. For those of you all that are really serious and intentional, intentional about growing and changing your emotional health and emotional intelligence this year, please check out eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash EQA eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash EQA. We are going to be starting our eight-week course helping people grow and develop your emotional health and emotional intelligence. So get on the waiting list and you'll be receiving a series of emails and stuff that will explain when we start and kind of more details about the course for those of y'all that are interested. All right. So today I got two phone calls and I'm going to, I'm going to, protect the names, you know, you know, to, to protect the innocent, if you will. No, I just, I just, you know, I didn't get their permission to share details. So I'm not going to share details. So I'll just share some general, general um, uh, concepts and points from the phone calls that I had today. 
one of my buddies that I talked to today, he called me up and, and his background, he was an infantry brigade commander, full board colonel, 06, United States Army, who recently started a consulting business. And what's super exciting is he has got some consulting clients and he is currently working with and coaching four senior level managers, project managers for this company. And they're wanting him to help them out in the area of leadership. He's doing leadership coaching with these four senior managers in this very, very large company. And he called me up today and he said, Noble, man, I, you know, because he's been following our, our podcast now, I think from the beginning. Man, this EQ stuff is amazing. <laughs> he said, it is, it is, it is so, so powerful. He said, my four coaching clients with these senior managers of this big company, as I'm sitting down and coaching these guys and their leadership, what I realize is all four of them are impacted and limited by their current emotional health and emotional intelligence. And so it's, it's been really neat to, to talk to him about this. And it was just neat for him to make that connection with folks that he's personally coaching and, and leading himself to become better leaders themselves. So that was really neat. And then we had another conversation about a family decision that their family is, is, you know, is making is in the process of making that's going to impact their whole family. It's a, it's a very positive, positive thing. And one thing that I, you know, he, you know, he kind of asked my input kind of, Hey, what are your thoughts? And, and I said, well, the, the big thing, again, just from my background, you know, the last handful of years now with a very, very intentional about emotional intelligence is, and, and, and realizing the power of EQ and decision making and how every single one of our decisions has some sort of deep emotion that is driving said decision, whether we're conscious of it or not, I said, I would I would just go around each family member and, and ask them, you know, okay, what decision would you make, right, without influence of other family members, but what decision would you make? Why would you make that decision and then see if you can identify what the emotion is and the belief is that is driving you to make that particular decision. For example, the number of decisions that I've made over the course of my lifetime, because deep down inside, I wanted to please somebody and to get validated and affirmed by somebody, I, I can't even count the number of decisions that I've made based on that. Now, I would have told you some other reason. Oh, well, the reason that I'm making this decision is is some very, I'm sure, very pious or, you know, uh, you know, some great reason that everyone would agree, oh, well, that's a that's a great reason why you'd make that decision. Not even realizing that deep down inside, I'm, 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 I'm coming out of a place of people pleasing, right? Because I've said that a zillion times on, on our podcast, I'm a recovering people pleaser addict. And again, I would have never known that, but if maybe if I was challenged to really dig deep and dig deep, like why am I making this decision? Now, I'm not saying that's that's you know why you make decisions, but I'm just giving you an example that you know you can make good decisions for unhealthy reasons. And that may change the outcome of that decision if you realized it's for an unhealthy reason. Now, there that's not always obviously always the case. Maybe you make good decisions because there's good healthy reasons you're wanting to make that decision. All I'm saying is many of us don't even know why we make the decisions that we make. And if you spend some time to do some more some deeper emotional work to really identify what's the emotion and the belief that's maybe driving those decisions, you would realize, wow, okay, I, you know, intellectually, my intellectual or logical reason was A, but my emotion was G, and my belief was W. And, and, and that can really help to paint a much fuller picture 
to your decision making process. So that was something that we talked about today. It was really, really neat. And, and again, he's a very senior leader himself. So it was really neat to have that conversation with him. Another gentleman I had was with a, another another friend of mine who's a not, uh, well, he's former military, but very, very successful in the corporate world. And he, and again, I'm going to just speak in general terms here. You know, he, he asked me about my counseling experience because I've been, you know, I've, I've, been to a number of different counseling, uh, you know, I've been a spiritual counseling for, for, you know, a a lot of different, probably four or five different uh, spiritual counseling uh, experiences or sessions, whatever. And then, and then also, you know, life uh, uh, counseling, marriage counseling, emotional counseling. uh, Also for, man, for probably, we probably attended for probably a good year, I would say. And it was life changing, life changing. And it was funny. I just got interviewed on on a, on a podcast today. Uh, let's see, uh, by a great, super great guy, uh, AJ Armstrong, Aaron Armstrong. He's a, another West Point grad. Winners, wallets, and worldviews is his podcast. Winners, wallets, and worldviews. And again, that's Aaron Armstrong, super guy, and. You know, again, also just 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 talking about this concept that some people can have this maybe um, maybe a concern like, oh man, you're going to counseling, or you're man, you're getting coaching. Like, well, you know, why are you getting counseling? Why why are you why are you getting coaching? You know, do, you know, don't you don't you know the answer yourself, or don't you know how to get get better yourself? And for me. Here's how I've how, how I've approached that. I've been a lifelong learner, my, and I got it from my dad. And my dad was an ER doctor, a brilliant, brilliant guy, and he always asked questions. Here, this guy again, like certified genius, and brilliant, brilliant guy. Memorized books of the Bible, or memorized the entire book of John word for word. You know, would do two to three hours of of medical studying every single night that he would come home from from work. He would study two to three hours a night after his you know twenty four forty eight hour shifts. And 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 then when I would get in high, when I got into junior high high school, he'd start asking me questions about stuff about life, about God, about faith. You know, just about about purpose, about all these different very deep topics. And I'm like, man, why are you asking me? I'm a punk kid. What do I know? And but but what it taught me was, man, this guy, as brilliant and smart as he is, he is still curious. He's still intellectually curious, spiritually curious. You know, it just it was fascinating, and and I learned that from him. And so, for me, I love learning. And so then I started studying some of the top people out there, business people, athlete athletes, you know, athletic folks, you know, top performers in, the, in their different spaces, and. What I realized is LeBron James, you know Aaron Rodgers, Conor McGregor, Tiger Woods. Pick, pick, pick your athletes. Pick your top business people, and how many of, how many of them, of those top performers in their respective industries, top world class performers, have coaches, not one coach, multiple coaches. They have multiple, you know, you again, you call it whatever you want, coaches, counselors, subject matter experts, fill in the blank. They have, LeBron James, I've read a couple articles. LeBron James spends a million dollars a year on, on himself from his nutritionist to his strength coaches, his conditioning folks, his movement folks, his diet folks, his thought pro his, you know, uh, life coaches, his a million bucks a year to make sure that he's performing and optimizing his own performance. Why wouldn't he? He's world class. How did he become right? How did he become world class? So, and that's not just LeBron, that's all these guys. So if the if the if the greatest athletes and, and business people people in the world surround themselves with people smarter than they are in their respective fields and industries, why would I not want to do that? Why would I want not want to pursue 
coaching or counseling to become to optimize my own performance. To, don't tell me that your marriage is operating at its peak performance. That that you and or your spouse are the hap like could not be happier. Like you're or maybe you you you've you you couldn't be better parents. You're the greatest parent. Like come on, you know what I'm saying? Like we can all get better. In, in, in all these different areas. So why would you not want to do that? So so anyway, he was, so 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 my buddy was asking me, hey, you know, he was, he was you know, he said, hey, I'm not nervous, but, I, you know, he was a little nervous. You know, he had never done counseling before. And he's, you know, he, he's, um, he, he kind of came from that same camp that I came from that, oh man, you know, counseling, I don't know, man, you know, counseling, that's kind of, you know, that's weak sauce, even though I, I think that, you know, I, I think everybody should should pursue counseling and coaching. Like everybody, everybody can improve. Everybody can improve. And so, so but so anyway, so he asked my experience, and I told him. I said, dude. So I told him all that stuff I just told you guys. And it was so funny. So you know, so now I told him, hey man, I'm praying for you. It's going to be an amazing experience. You're gonna you're gonna have a great connection with the guy, and he's gonna be you know he's gonna you know really help you out. Well, anyway. I texted him after his his coaching counseling session was over. And I, I probably got blasted with five or six different texts on how life-changing just one hour. He just sat down one hour with this guy. Excuse me. And this guy nailed a particular issue that he has had in his life about his his emotions, his you know, his his you know, call it EQ for uh, or emotional health, if you will, in the first like 30 minutes of the conversation. That's the power of sitting down with a SME, with with a subject matter expert, with somebody who is you know, maybe trained or can help you in this particular area. And and it, it, un, it changed, literally just one hour. He hasn't done anything. Just one hour with this guy has already changed this guy's life. And, and he, and I mean, I'm talking cha- like, <laughs> he was ecstatic about the breakthrough that he's already experienced just in the first 30 minutes to an hour with this coach counselor it's it's been already been life changing and and so now I'm like dude I'm so excited that now you're really able to to continue on a whole nother level your own emotional growth journey it's going to be life changing for you being able to experience this and and so he's ex- like he's like I want to tell everybody I'm like dude that's that's why we started this podcast man is to tell other people man the power that you can have in your life the breakthroughs you can have in your own life when you take ownership of your own emotional growth journey. Now let me jump into my some a recent one that I've had. So, and I'm going to, again, for those of y'all that are watching this on YouTube now, I'm going to jump onto my script here. So, because I took a bunch of notes on this and this is a, this is a, some of you guys may think this is going to be completely lame and and I, that's fine. I, that's no sweat. Obviously you can, you know, you have the freedom to feel however you want to feel about this particular victory that I'm going to share with you. But for many people, it is going to be lame. And I understand that's how it's going to come. You know, it may sound completely lame, but I'm okay with that because for me, it's a massive, massive victory in my emotional journey and my relationship specifically with food in this case. And for those of you all that have seen me before or know me, I've got some wisdom in my beard. <laughs> I've got gray and a lot of gray in my beard. I have been around for a hot minute. I'm, I am cool modi. And Run DMC and Simon and Garfunkel old. And I'm talking like tape old. <laughs> okay, just to give you some perspective. Here's the deal. I never learned how to cook. I never learned how to cook. You heard me say it, cook. Like I've never learned how to cook before. My mom never taught me. I never asked her to teach me. My, you know, I've been married forever. And I've never learned from my wife. I, I never asked her to, to teach me. And for me, eating healthy was always somebody else's responsibility. 
And some of you guys know my in some of the other previous episodes, I talked about my relationship with food. I learned from my dad, uh, eating was a coping mechanism for him. That's how he dealt with stress from the ER, was he would always eat, just always, always eat and graze and eat. And now, of course, I didn't realize it at the time that's what he was doing. I didn't realize that I learned from him that coping mechanism, but that's exactly what I did. My entire life, I've struggled with food, I've struggled with my weight, and and so, but again, had no idea about any of that, any of those, I had not made any of those connections before. And for me, eating healthy again was always somebody else's responsibility. You know, when I was a kid, it was my mom's responsibility. Being married, it was my wife's responsibility. And you know, she's a great, my wife's a great cook. And but if if we, you know, if if there was a particular meal or whatever that we didn't eat healthy, or if I wasn't eating healthy subconsciously, it was my wife's fault. It wasn't. It wasn't my fault. I mean, man, how could it be my fault? I don't know how to cook, so it's it's clearly my wife's fault. If if I'm gaining weight or whatever, well, that's 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 my wife's fault because you know she's the one that cooks. Crazy, right? It's crazy, but that's that's a true story. And so now, now here's the interesting thing: the reason I didn't cook or or even want to necessarily eat clean is because you don't take care of what you don't value. Well, I didn't value myself. I had I had a, a very low, poor, negative self-esteem, self-condemnation, self-hatred. Why would I take care of what I don't value? Why would I eat clean when I don't value my when I don't value myself? I don't value my body. What I, I, I'm I'm worthless. I don't have any I don't have any value. That was that's my mind. That was my mindset. That was my thought process for years, maybe decades. So this is not like a short-term thing for you, for me. Then again, three and a half, four years ago, I started my very intentional and consistent emotional growth journey. I finally took ownership of my own healing, my own emotional growth. Someone else can't do that for you. Someone else can't grow your emotion, you know, your your can't do that emotional work for yourself. You have to do that. So I, I finally started to take ownership. I, I, I stopped passing the blame. I stopped making excuses. I started to allow myself to feel and process unpleasant emotions. I learned how to identify and uh, 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 process my emotions. I started to, to take the time to reflect, to identify the origin stories of my emotions. And, and not just around food, but other neglected areas of my life. And that's, you know, again, th- this whole journey is what led to starting this whole podcast in the first place. I've been able to keep off, so I, uh, 40 pounds. So I, I lost 40 pounds in a, in a few months and have kept those off for the, the last six months, which, guys, is coming from a guy who has done, no kidding, 75 to 100 different diets. N- like, not even exaggerating. And, and I'm talking the success around those diets, those 75 to 100 diets, maybe three days was my, like my track was like the longest. And like one time out of all those 75 to 100 diets, I think I lasted a full week. So to, 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 to tell you that I've lost 40 pounds and kept it off for six months, like that is mangaso, y'all. That is humongous for me. That's, Six months for me when in relationship to food might as well be 10 to 20 years of success based on, you know, my, my previous track record. And I did it with intermittent fasting. And I, I've told you guys, you know, some of you guys who saw, I did a Facebook post a, a while back. A buddy of mine named Dan Ayers reached out to me and, you know, told me about this intermittent fasting deal. And thankfully, I was just ready to hear it. And he gave me some great advice, great coaching, and that, and so intermittent fasting has been has been game changer for me. But again, the only way so it's and and not to knock intermittent fasting, for me it's not intermittent fasting. It's the fact that I've been doing emotional work so that intermittent fasting could work, because otherwise intermittent fasting would just be diet number one hundred and one, and I would still be unsuccessful, and I'd have lasted three days. So the emotional growth and the emotional healing 
is what has been able has contributed for me to to be you know able to continue this for for this long. So my consistency again because of my low EQ and some of the emotional injuries and you know some very underdeveloped emotional areas in my life, my consistency has been terrible in my life. So the fact that I've got six months under my belt has been has been game changer. So the, so here's what happened the other night. My so my my wife was running her scene in the wilderness Bible study, her online Bible study with with a bunch of ladies, and uh, uh, our daughter was doing homework, and I said, okay, I'm gonna cook. I'm cooking for the family. And you know, <laughs> my daughter's like, I'm out because <laughs> she you know, like, dude, you don't ever cook, so this is gonna be a train wreck, and. Man, and I just, you know, it was with one, now granted, so so here's my disclaimer, it was with, with one of those meal services, so it was called, I think it's called HelloFresh or something, and so it's got the step-by-step, and, and it's infantry-proof for, you know, my infantry background, but but even still, I had, I had ne- listen, y'all, I had never cooked before. I am, I have been in this ball of mud for a long time, and that's the first time I had ever ever cooked in my life aside from like cereal ice cream ramen noodles <laughs> so for me to cook a meal a dinner and it was tostadas which was amazing beef tostadas it was amazing and and, and like it, it to you know <laughs> it, it and again it may like okay noble dude that's so lame like you cooked seriously that's the big that's the big deal I didn't have the decades of unhealthy emotions around food anymore. I didn't have these negative stories swirling around in my brain. I didn't have the anxiety like, oh, what, like what, all those stories, like, dude, you're cooking. Like, you can't cook. You never learned how to cook. You're an idiot. What are you talking about? You can't. Just get out of the kitchen, dude. Let someone else do that. I didn't have any of that. It, it was almost like I had a blank slate, like, Hey, cool. All right. Let me see. Let me see if I can figure this out. It was for me, it was like a challenge, like a, you know, but again, if I hadn't done that emotional growth, you know, been on my emotional growth journey, I'd still be this old guy who doesn't know how to cook for himself. That's crazy, y'all. So I'm so thankful. Again, just another area of my life, which again, may not be big for for most of y'all, but it's just another area of my life that I'm getting more healing in so much so again that I was able to cook for my family and it was you know and 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 both my wife and daughter have, have have pretty high standards when it comes to their food and they both dug it so that was another massive massive victory so not only had I done it but it, you know uh, my wife and daughter you know thought it was good as well so that was a a huge huge victory. So here's another victory for myself, another victory. I've been consistently doing my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at, uh, I go to Prime BJJ in Colorado Springs with Professor Marcelo. He's a fourth degree black belt, amazing dude. Amazing, amazing dude, so humble. Humble guy, you know, always, you know, he's teachable. He he he's loves learning and growing, which you know this guy's been doing jits for thirty years, y'all. Thirty years. Anyway, so I've been doing jits for five to six days a week now for six months straight. I've again, consistency has has been a massive challenge for me for probably twenty plus years. Again, it's because of all these emotional injuries that have been piling up and piling up and piling up. And they've created these these roadblocks, mental and emotional roadblocks, that have really impacted my ability to perform. And so now that I've I've taken ownership and have been consistent in my emotional growth journey, all these different areas of my life, man, are starting to 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 clear up and 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 open up, where I can get healing and freedom and growth. And the, my relationship with the Lord is going to a whole other level again because of my 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 emotional you know growth or lack thereof was just really limiting my faith journey tremendously 
So I, I, I it, you know, and then of course at the end of, of so along with the Jits, of course I did that, which is huge. And again, the folk, you know, um, my wife and daughter dug my meal that I made and I cleaned up, you know, cleaned up after where I cleaned up the dishes and lowered the dishwasher and all that stuff was good too, right? So, but I just want to encourage you that regardless of how old you are, if you're old school like me, you can still learn, grow, and change. How many times have we heard, it's never too late? Well, I'm telling you, from someone who's old school, it's never too late, y'all. Take ownership of your own healing and emotional growth. If you're hitting walls, or maybe you're plateauing, or you're 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 repeating some some unproductive or unhealthy behaviors, you're having trouble focusing or being consistent, there's probably some deep emotional injury or injuries that haven't been healed yet. So take the time to work on this stuff. Pray. Get God involved. Ask God to give you direction. You know, get into God's word. Find some verses around the topics that you're trying to work on. And, and be intentional with your own emotional growth journey. Consistently. Not just, okay, I read a book on EQ. Boom, I've got, I'm emotionally intelligent now. That's not how it works. This takes time. This stuff takes time. And if I can do it, I'm telling you, you can do it. It's never too late. It's never let, too late to change. It's absolutely amazing. It's freeing. It, you know, and here's the thing too. The, 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 the thing about emotional dysfunction is that we get, we get to a place where we become functionally dysfunctional. You guys, I'm sure you guys have heard of the term, a, a, what do you call it? Functionally alcoholic. Well, that's how we all get with our emotional dysfunction. A lot of us, most of us, aren't even aware of the emotional injuries that that we've suffered through or that how, you know, that we've, yeah, that we've, that have impacted us, how they're impacting us and to what extent they're impacting us and to how many different areas of our lives they're impacting us. So I just really wanna encourage you guys, if I can do it, if I can learn these new things, learn how to cook, drop 40 pounds, be consistent for six months straight, launch a podcast a year ago and have been consistent for a hundred and a couple episodes now for for a year straight, all these different areas, y'all, you can too. Emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally. And for those of you all, again, that are ready to take your emotional growth to the next level, check out our course, eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash EQA, eqforentrepreneurs.com forward slash EQA. You are worth it and your healing is worth it.